Barbuda evacuated as dangerous hurricane Jose Nez. Our top story in Caribbean Newsline for Friday, September 8th from the CMC News Center in Bridgetown. I'm Ricardo Roberts. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. A mandatory evacuation was issued and then executed in Barbuda with the second major hurricane expected to hit Antigua's sister isle in less than a week. In the wake of Hurricane Irma, which destroyed 95% of housing in Barbuda, and Hurricane Jose forecast to go a similar path, Antigua and Barbuda's Attorney General and Minister of Public Safety, Stedroy Benjamin, issued the evacuation order on Friday. And he warned that anyone who fails to comply will be in breach of the law and could be punished. Residents were transferred from Barbuda to Antigua via sea and air. Acting Social Transformation Minister Max Fernandez reiterated that people had to go. At last count, we had over 800 people, we estimate, off the island. We have another, I would say, about 300 people in the staging areas. And we, there are a number of people that don't want to leave. Uh, at the, once we clear the staging areas, we're going to be, the police are going to be going around trying to see if they can round them up to get them off the island. There are a number of people who have come over on private boats with friends or whatever, and there are not a lot of Antiguans now who are using their own resources to go and get people. CMC's Nicole Best is in Antigua and joins us live on the line with an update. Good evening, Nicole. Good evening, Ricardo. And the evacuation on Bermuda has been completed. Just finished with a meeting here with Mr. Philmore Mullins. He is the director of the national, of NODS, that's the National Office for um, Disaster Services. And he has said, yes, it was completed. The last sea vessel left Barbuda around 3 p.m. And they were at the, around that time, there were about 200 people at, the, at one airport, at the main airport, and there was another 150 at Coco Point, which is a grass strip where an, an aircraft was supposed to land and pick them up. But he has confirmed that everyone has been evacuated from the island except for 27 security personnel. So there are 27 security personnel alone on the island of Barbuda. And one of the things that Mr. Mullins said to CMC in describing the situation over there, he said, I've been a disaster management, uh, in disaster management for a number of years, and I have never seen that level of devastation in any of the countries that I have been to. But he also said that he noticed that uh, from uh, a cursory look at the situation, because he was over there yesterday, he said from a cursory observation, it appears that the poor building techniques might have been the reason for such widespread devastation. And he said, however, that more detailed assessments have to be done in order to come up with a completed report on the matter. Now, um, once these assessments were completed yesterday, he said that it was difficult not to advise the Prime Minister not to... Um, have a mandatory evacuation order. So he said after they saw what was happening over there yesterday and uh, realizing that Jose, Hurricane Jose, that's who, which is now a Category 4 hurricane, heading this way, he said that they needed to do that mandatory evacuation. So yes, you have all Barbudian residents evacuated and only 27 security personnel there. Tell us what accommodation and other provisions are being made in Antigua for the evacuees. Well, the shelters were opened at this afternoon at 4 o'clock. Now, prior to the, the notice of the hurricane heading this way, shelters were open. At least four shelters were left open after the passage of Irma for the people who were coming over from Barbuda. In addition to that, private citizens were opening up their homes 
and their com and their and their businesses to take in these people. There were some people who were offering to give a room or two in their homes. Some people were offering a apartments. Some people were offering transportation. People were offering clothing and food and shoes. Private citizens organized themselves and they were making offers and donations. Some of them were using their private vehicles to pick up people from, stage, from staging points and bring them to where they needed to go just so that they can get a piece of, a bit of comfort and a bit of rest and, and uh, recuperation from that horrific experience that they've had over in Barbuda. Now, when the announcement was made, when it was realized that Jose is headed this way, and uh, as a matter of fact, we're going to be expected to begin stealing some of the winds about, well, the weather is expected to deteriorate by about 8 p.m. tonight, but the bulk of it is going to be around midnight. So when it was realized that Jose was heading this way, the shelters, all of the shelters, there were 40 shelters on the island. There are 17 districts, but a total of 40 shelters on the island of Antigua. All shelters were opened at 4 p.m. All shelters were open at 4 p.m. And up to the point of my interview with the head of the NEOC, there were no reports of people going to those shelters yet. And when we talk about people going to the shelters, we're talking about people from the island of Antigua. No, no people from the island of Antigua uh, were making them, were availing themselves of the, the, the shelters. So, well, What's the feeling on the ground now, um, Nicole? Um, I know you told me earlier that people are still calm, but now the, the, the hurricane is inching closer and closer to the island. Are the emotions still the same, or emotions are yes. running high? Yes, still calm. There's still, there's still vehicle on the road, not as much as there was earlier today, but we still have some vehicles on the road. Um, the airport was closed at uh, commercial flights. That is, it was closed to commercial flights at 2 o'clock this afternoon. And when the last evacuation relief flight arrived, the airport was completely closed. Um, they are still the utility companies are still trying to restore some of the infrastructure, but there's no indication that this infrastructure, especially when we're talking about electricity, would be energized in areas in Antigua that are still without electricity. Because though Antigua was not badly hit by Irma, some areas lost power, and some of them had um, broken broken poles and fallen lines and all of that, and so. There was effort up and about this afternoon to have the infrastructure restored as best as possible, but there were no indications that those electricity lines were going to be energized, especially since they are looking at the, well, since uh, Jose is threatening. What I was also told by the EOC director is that um, when no indication has been given yet as to when the utility services are going to be cut off. But there's going to come a point in time during the evening when a decision is going to be taken that utility services, the water and electricity would be cut off in all areas. That's especially if there is a concern that um, there's going to be devastation if these things remain up. We understand Sedima has also been on the ground. What have they, they been doing? Yes. Sedima is on the ground here. The Sedima team is being led by Ms. Joanne Passad, um, and the team is called the Rapid Needs Assessment Team. The objective of that team, that team is usually the first team to get into a country that has faced a disaster. And as the name suggests, they're supposed to do a, a quick assessment of the needs, and they are to identify the priorities. And then after that, other teams would be sent in to deal with the needs in these areas. Now, the Rapid Needs Assessment Team, and it's the, the acronym is the RNAT. The RNAT here in Antigua came here last night, that would have been Thursday night, to deploy to Anguilla and the BVI. But when we got here, when they got here, they, it was realized that there was a need on the ground here, especially in light of the fact, again, that Jose was approaching and um, was posing serious threats to the islands, both islands of Antigua and Barbuda. So a decision had to be quickly made. It was made that the team would remain here for the next couple of days, day or two, and assist in whatever way possible. They're going to assist the National Emergency, of the Emergency Operations Center here in Antigua and Barbuda. And this is where the team has been stationed for the last uh, 12 or so hours. Okay, thank you, Nicole. We'll have to leave it there. That was Nicole Best, our... CMC's correspondent on the line uh, in Antigua right now as the island prepares for another major hurricane, Hurricane Jose.
about to hit the island in a couple of hours. And Jose remains a dangerous Category 4 hurricane. It is packing maximum sustained winds near 150 miles per hour and is about 335 miles east-southeast of the northern Leeward Islands. It is moving to the west-northwest at 70 miles per, 17 miles per hour. And forecasters say its center is expected to pass near or just east of the northeastern Leeward Islands tomorrow. Forecasters say some fluctuations in Jose's intensity, both up and down, are possible in the next day or so, and gradual weakening is expected after that. As Jose gets closer to the island chain, more watches and warnings have been issued. A hurricane warning is in effect for Barbuda, Angola, French and Dutch St. Martin and St. Barthelemy. A hurricane watch as well as a tropical storm warning are in place for Antigua. Also under a tropical storm warning, uh, Sabre and St. Eustatius. A uh, tropical storm watch is in effect for Montserrat, St. Kitts and Nevis, the British Virgin Islands, and St. Thomas and St. John in the U.S. Virgin Islands. And the hurricane that battered Antigua and others in the Leeward just a few days ago is now said to be responsible for at least 22 deaths. There are now 11 confirmed deaths on St. Martin and St. Bart's, four in the Virgin Islands, three on Puerto Rico, two on Dutch St. Martin, one on Barbuda, and one in Angola. Earlier on Friday, Irma's 175 mile per hour winds and 20 foot waves battered the British overseas territory of the Turks and Caicos Islands. But with communications down, the extent of the devastation remains unclear and Irma's lashing winds and rains left more than a million people without power and tens of thousands without water in Puerto Rico. There were also reports of flooding. Governor Ricardo Rossello, that's Rossello, or Rossello declared a disaster in the tiny islands of Culebra and Vic, that's Viquez to Puerto Rico's east, which were hard hit by the storm. Haiti and the Dominican Republic, which share the island of Hispaniola, avoided direct hits, but the brush of Irma still caused major damage. A key bridge between the two countries was taken out, and in the Dominican Republic, there were flattened buildings, downed trees, and power lines. Heavy rains thrashed Haiti's north coast, and several areas lost power. At least one person was reported missing in the French-speaking nation. The Haitian government said on Friday that it was moving quickly to restore normalcy. And hurricane conditions were Friday evening spreading westward over portions of Cuba and the central Bahamas as Irma continued on a path of the Caribbean, out of the Caribbean rather. Now Hurricane Irma is carrying maximum sustained winds near 155 miles per hour. Forecasters say although the hurricane has been downgraded slightly, it remains a massively powerful and extremely dangerous system. At 5 p.m., it was located about 195 miles east of Caibarian, Cuba, and moving westward at 12 miles per hour. Forecasters say a turn toward the northwest is expected by late Saturday, and the eye of Irma should continue to move near the north coast of Cuba and the central Bahamas Friday night and Saturday and be near the Florida Keys and the southern Florida Peninsula Sunday morning still as a Category 4 hurricane. And when we come back, we'll tell you which Caribbean countries affected by Hurricane Irma will get some insurance payout soon and just how much they'll get. We'll be right back after the break. The government of Dominica and Discover Dominica Authority welcomes you to the most unique Caribbean island, Dominica. Bursting with life, with energy, Dominica enraptures you in the vibrancy of the 20th edition of the World Creole Music Festival, October 27th, 28th, and 29th. Windsor Park Sports Stadium, Rose Dominica. Featuring Marshall Montano, Sweet Mickey, Movado, Kalasha, Bungie, and Fayan, Class, Sakai, Zuko Stars, Roman Virgo, Itana, Esa Triple K International, Yemi 
Saturday, music at all stars, dreamers, swinging stars, and more. Be part of the spectacle. This is the World Creole Music Festival held in the nature island of the world, Dominica. Season tickets US 125 or 325 EC. Nightly tickets US 48 or 120 EC. Visit dominicafestivals.com where you will yearn for more. Say, music and do you want a real Barbadian experience with peace and tranquility? A home away from home feeling? Come and stay at Best E Villas. We offer two amazing locations to choose from, Prospect St. James or Christ Church. Plan a staycation for your anniversary, birthdays, summer or winter breaks, or any special event. Best E Villas is located in close proximity to our lovely beaches. Call us now at 246-425-9751 or visit us at bestevillas.com and make your booking for the best in Villas. In a place where legends start, the beach is just the beginning. So live a little for the exhilaration and the color of every moment where time is and life is a spirited event. Immerse yourself in the culture, the music, the people, the island. Love Antigua and Barbuda. Embrace an experience that leaves you breathless from cricket to sailing week to carnival and more. Antigua and Barbuda, the beach is just the beginning. At least three Caribbean countries hard hit by Hurricane Irma will get insurance payouts from the CCRIF SPC. That's the facility formerly known as the Caribbean Catastrophe Risk Insurance Facility. Antigua and Barbuda, Anguilla and St. Kitts and Nevis will get a total of 15.6 million US dollars through the tropical cyclone policies. The Gaston Brown administration in Antigua and Barbuda, which has declared a state of emergency in Barbuda, is set to receive almost 6.8 million US dollars. Anguilla, which sustained substantial damage to homes, buildings and infrastructure, will get just over $6.5 million. And while the damage was not nearly as bad in St. Kitts and Nevis, the Twin Island Federation's policy has triggered a payout of just under $2.3 million. US dollars. Angola and St. Kitts and Nevis could also receive a second payout since both countries have excess rainfall policies. The CCRIF SPC is assessing if the rains from the Hurricane Irma triggered those policies and that will be determined in the next few days. Meantime, CARICOM Chairman Dr. Keith Mitchell of Grenada has assured that the regional grouping and the Caribbean Disaster Emerg Emergency Management Agency, SEDEMA, are working together to ensure the needs of the affected islands are addressed in a timely, efficient and safe manner. In a statement, Dr. Mitchell said that CARICOM through SIDEMA has already taken a number of immediate steps in the last few days. Rapid needs assessment teams were organized for ready deployment to Antigua, Angola and the British Virgin Islands, Turks and Caicos and Bahamas. Those teams include water and sanitation specialists, communications personnel, health specialists, and fisheries and agriculture specialists. Sedema has the, at the same time mobilized personnel and resources for those islands, including the procurement of additional emergency items such as tarpaulins and water. In addition to its base in Barbados, Sedema has a support team stationed in Jamaica that is providing immediate support for the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos, and Haiti. A team of 100 persons, including engineers, medics, regiments, first responders, was scheduled to leave from Jamaica with first supplies for 1,000 households for Turks and Caicos Islands and Bahamas as needed. Dr. Mitchell thanked the Sidema team for being proactive in addressing the needs of affected islands. And he also expressed a uh, expressed deep appreciation to donor groups and countries for their contributions including the United Kingdom, the United Nations, UNICEF and the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations. 
And ahead in Newsline Sport, the West Indies put up a resistance in the decisive third test against England. We'll have the details after the break. In a place where legends start, the beach is just the beginning. So live a little for the exhilaration and the colour of every moment. Where time is and life is a spirited event. Immerse yourself in the culture, the music, the people, the island. Love Antigua and Barbuda. Embrace an experience that leaves you breathless. From cricket to sailing week to carnival and more. Antigua and Barbuda, the beach is just the beginning. Race one winner Brendan Leach would spin at the exit of turn one. Gets offline, goes off into the grass. Here it is from his viewpoint. A couple of cones pay the price. Others have to take evasive action. One car crossing the track into the wet grass. As Leach went for that spin, Jordan Sherat, Boston Kazuba, Raphael Forcier in the 62 lock horns as they race up to the keyhole. Everyone tiptoeing. They're still battling hard up front, though. But wait, there's more. What made you want to start dealing with people's financial responsibilities? Like, well, why? You know what, that's, a, that's actually... <laughs> is, is it stressful? <laughs> it is stressful, I, but I have to say, the probably the biggest problem, the, the, the biggest source of maybe stress for me is mm -hmm. knowing that that person does have something that they can do about their problem, mm -hmm. but for whatever reason, they're not taking action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it might be fear, it might be mm -hmm. just overwhelm. That's why I'm there. Well, Cricket Tops, our weekend sports segment, the West Indies continued to put up a resistance in the decisive third test against England with a lead of 22 at the end of day three at Lords. The West Indies finished on 93 for the loss of three wickets with middle order batsman Shea Hope remaining unbeaten on 35 and Kieran Powell chipping in with 45 from 73 balls. Medium pacer James Anderson reached his landmark 500 wickets in international test cricket as the first Englishman to do so after he picked up two wickets for 17 runs. Earlier, England battled their way to 194 all-out at T to carve out a handy first innings lead. Replying to the Caribbean side's 123, England were booted or boosted by all-rounder Ben Stokes, 60, while Stuart Broad arrived late on to belt 38 from 45 balls. Right arm Roach was at his best, finishing with 5 for 72, while captain and fellow pacer Jason Holder claimed 4 for 54. Trinbago Knight Riders booked their place in the finals of the Caribbean Premier League after defeating Guyana Amazon Warriors by 6 wickets. Sent in to bat at the Brian Lara Cricket Academy in Taruba, the Warriors posted 159 for 6 from their 20 overs. Gajadan Singh was the top scorer with 39, while Chadwick Walton chipped in with 37 from 31 balls. Spinners Sunil Narayan and Ronsford Beaton picked up two tickets each. He sent in the Amazon Warriors, and they opened with Sahail, who got things underway immediately with a maximum. Walton fatted this full toss as well. Ah! And then Tanvir LBW to Sunil Narayan. First one down. Ronke came in, and he's in good touch. And he certainly looked it early on. Walton gets another freebie and makes it disappear. And then a beautiful Yorker from the skipper, DJ Bravo, sent Ronke packing. Yep. Oh, stump Walton. He looked good touch. He got to 37 and got stumped. Jason Muhammad couldn't get going again. Caught by Yasser Shah of Searles. Big fella Primus. And Gajanan Singh into it as well. Some lovely striking. Oh, that is sweet. So sweet. And they took into uh, Dan Christian. Primus. Wonderful striking from him. Just kept fatting it everywhere over cover. Six 
65 of 33 balls between these two. Wonderful striking from these two warriors. And then that was it. Beaton said, I better have you. First ball, Ferdinand. Cooper in the end held on to a juggling act. In reply, a brace from TKR's Colin Monroe, Monroe held set up the victory for the home side. Monroe survived two drop catches to remain unbeaten on 57, while Darren Bravo also made a significant contribution of 43 as Knight Riders reached 160 for four in 18 overs. 5-9 for six was posted, and then an LBW early. Went against Sue on the run, first one down. And then Colin Monroe, lovely boundary striking off Jacobs. That was all too easy. And then a bit of luck. You've got to catch these, Primus. Are you kidding me? Says Jacobs. And then Tarek came in. And the skipper, Emirat, put it down. Monroe again off Rashid Khan. Can't believe it. And then a little tickle. Emirate in the thick of it, the captain brought himself on, got rid of Tarek. Darren Bravo showing all his class to join Munro and struck it so superbly. He looked like he was going to run away with this Eliminator 2 and that was that for six. Munro kept finding the gaps and anything short was always going to disappear. Oh yes sir. That was Bravo hitting a six. That's Munro carving one for 50. Good. Bravo said, look, I'm going to carry on. And then he got caught. Pamal got his man. Good. Captain came in, DJ Bravo, and said, I love this party, and fatted a couple early. Then he fell over from a wide one, and Luke Ronke very quick with the gloves, whipped off the bales. DJ Bravo out of here. And then Ramden came in, and that level head of his sorted things out with Colin Munro. Lovely striking, and then the last act, it was a wide to finish. TKR are into the final against the Patriots on Super Saturday. Wonderful scenes here. For those in red and black. Now the TKR will meet the St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots in the final on Saturday in what is going to be an interesting showdown as the visiting side had beaten Trinbago Knight Riders earlier in the qualifiers. That's the sport. We'll be right back. Grow your business or promote your event through the services offered by the Caribbean Media Corporation and Carib Vision. Our distribution provides a platform on cable, terrestrial television and websites. We cover carnivals and events from across the region. We can bring your event live and alive to the world. For music makers, program producers, businesses, we can expand your reach to in excess of 2 million households daily. Our other services include news updates to enhance your media products, studio space for program and development. We can facilitate the launch of new products and services and training. Contact us and we will help you unleash your creative ability, develop products and services, and provide the medium to watch them grow. Contact Loretta Skeet at cmccaribbean.com or call her 1-246-467-1044 or 1-246-253-3889. Call and book your carnival or event today. Again, the major developments of this day, Barbuda evacuated as dangerous hurricane who's in near the Leeward Islands. And in sport, West Indies put up a resistance on day three of the decisive third test against England. That's Caribbean Newsline for news and sport around the clock. Log on to carnanews.com. We'll be back here again on Monday, but from all of us at CMC News, thank you, stay safe and good night.